So the readings today in the ordinary form actually came up in the extraordinary form a, a week or two ago, um, right before I started doing these regularly, so I didn't have a chance to talk on them. Uh, but today, uh, it's the story of Susanna from the book of Daniel, from the book of the prophet Daniel, and then the story of the woman caught in adultery from John. And the way the church has uh, seems to have consistently uh, kind of lined these two stories up, I think, is important for us in understanding uh, the fullness of God's mercy as revealed in, in our Lord Jesus Christ. So in the story of Susanna, right, Daniel, who is a prophet and also kind of a wisdom figure in a very real way because a lot of his prophetic utterances that God gives to him are, are almost like solving mysteries, like of the natural world, like the Holy Spirit gives him prophetic insight into things, um, you know, into, into the way they're faking, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, the god Baal, or into understanding uh, these dream visions uh, given to the king, right? Um, um, and in the story of Susanna, into understanding the motive of these two corrupt elders of Israel who, um, you know, uh, they go to Susanna's husband, Joachim's house, um, because he is a wealthy man, he has a good house, and he lets the, the people come to his garden, especially the elders, the judges of the people, and these two men come and they see Susanna walk in the garden every day, and she's beautiful, and they decide to, to try to trick her, so one day when she decides to bathe while they're hiding in the garden, and she sends her maids out, they basically go up to her and they say, well, sleep with us, uh, and, uh, and uh, if you don't, we'll tell everybody we caught you sleeping with some uh, handsome young man, and he got away, but we'll We'll, we'll send you to death. And Susanna basically does what any, uh, you know, truly believing pious person does. She goes, well, if I sleep with you, I should die anyway, according to the law. But if I don't sleep with you, you'll accuse me falsely, and you'll probably win. But it's better for me to die than to betray the law of God. And so they do what they, exactly what they say they're going to do. They call for people, they call, and uh, they accuse her of committing adultery. And so the next day, uh, there's a trial, and these are two men, two elders, two judges, and when two people speak, right, the law recognizes that as, as firm witness. And so the people are going to stone Susanna. And Daniel, who is young, but who has been given uh, wisdom by the Holy Spirit because he's a prophet, he says, well, I'll have no part in this woman's innocent blood. And then comes a little bit of a detective story where uh, the other elders recognize that Daniel has been given a wisdom. They go, well, come sit with us and, and tell us what you mean. And Daniel basically catches the two men in a lie. They said they caught Susanna and her and her that fake lover they made up under a tree. And Daniel separates them and does like kind of a good cop interrogation. Well, give me a specific detail. And they get them wrong. But very confidently say the wrong thing. And this proves to everybody that they're liars. And then they are executed instead of Susanna as the law demands uh, because the punishment they tried to unjustly impose on another is given to them. And so here you see the mercy of God in vindicating uh, through his prophet, uh, through the wisdom given his prophet by the power of the Holy Spirit, vindicating this innocent woman. And that's real and powerful mercy. Um, you know, it's justice, you know, but it's also a mercy in the sense of that it's God uh, sending that prophet there into the midst to do that. And mercy, chesed, uh, is, is, can be translated as covenant love in the Old Testament, that abiding love of God with his people. So then what we see in the New Testament, in the Gospel of John, is they bring the similar kind of thing to our Lord in the place of Daniel. Uh, not, to, uh, not to the wise man given the Holy Spirit, right? But to the Son of God who is the eternal Logos, the eternal wisdom, the eternal Word of God, who is, the, uh, uh, who is united with the Holy Spirit as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are united in the Blessed Trinity. But they bring her and they go, oh, well, this woman, we caught her. In flagrante delecto. This woman is guilty. We walked in on her. And, and, you know, and there's a whole crowd of witnesses. And there's nothing in what's in John that implies that they're lying, right? Now, there is an implication they're trying to trap our Lord, right? By saying, don't stone her, he violates the law. No, he can't be a prophet. But by saying stone her, he violates the Roman uh, imposition that they can't put anyone to death, and they have a good reason to take him to Pilate and get him executed. So there is a trap here, but they're trying to trap our Lord rather than the way Daniel trapped the lying judges, the lying elders in the story of Susanna in his vindication of Susanna. But what our Lord does is our Lord uh, doesn't really answer the question. He seems to ignore it. He writes in the dirt. Now, I mean, you know, that's interpreted various ways in the Fathers. Some people think he begins anonymously writing out the sins of the people present, the things that they have done that require punishment that no one knows about, that no one has caught them in. And, and that's a real possibility. He could just be being idle and being like, this is not something I'm going to engage with in the way you want me to. But whatever that is, when they press him, he says, let those who are without sin cast the first stone. And this is important because they begin to leave, 
John tells us, starting with the eldest, that there is still some real wisdom here. You know, for however much it may be by its un- misunderstanding of what the Messiah should be, by its er- erroneous uh, undertaking of our Lord, there is still some real wisdom. And the elders, the elders are the ones who are like, he's got us, what can we say to that? And, and they walk away, and then that disperses the crowd. And then our Lord says to the lady, to the woman caught in adultery, he goes, is there no one left to condemn you? And of course she says, there's no one, Lord. And he goes, well, then neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And so here the mercy of God, our Lord, who is mercy incarnate, right? Because how is God more with his people in that covenant love than in the incarnation, united to our very humanity? Here that mercy goes beyond justice in a certain sense not negating justice because he tells her to go sin no more but also forgiving her the punishment which shows what he's going to do right that's a foretelling of the cross you know um because that's what happens in the cross the lord takes the punishment on himself the lord removes the punishment from us so that we can be given new life as this woman who thought she was going to be stoned to death is now given new life And that message of new life is the message of the gospel uh, uh, all the time, and especially now as we're entering into Passion Tide and into Holy Week and into Easter, that, that, that our Lord is come to give us life, as he'll say, and give it to us in full, give it to us abundantly. And I think that's important for us to remember right now, in this time when we're surrounded by sickness and fear and, yeah, even death, and, and that need for us to hold on to that promise of life, that promise of life that is more than just temporal life in this world, life in the present age, but is indeed a life, as St. Paul said yesterday, a life of the Spirit, uh, an eternal life welling up into us, you know, and the reality of that, e- of that eternal life given us, uh, that if we hold fast to the promise of God and faith and hope and live it and live the grace we've been given in love and charity, in mercy, and then we will be given a new lease on life. And not merely the new lease on life the woman was given, uh, forgiven in the moment a new earthly life, but forgiven for all eternity and given a new life as adopted sons and daughters of God by the power of that Holy Spirit that gave Daniel wisdom and that comes to us to give us divine life and the dwelling of the Blessed Trinity in our very hearts and our very souls. And if so, especially in this time, this difficult time, Um, of sickness, of death, this difficult time of being unable to worship together publicly, this difficult time of quarantine and social distancing, hold on to that, that our our Lord has come to give us life. And giving us that life, he gives us something more than what the world can give. As always, stay safe out there. I'm remembering you in my prayers and my masses. Say an ave for me if you get the chance. And please always remember that God is in control.